you're in the mix. SKM presents Strictly for the Music Podcast. You are now live with the number one podcast for all upcoming artists worldwide. It's the real. The real deal. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode. This is Strictly for the Music Podcast. I'm your host, SKM, and that's just a guy live with the red is a drummer, upcoming drummer from England. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm welcome to Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> hey, man, Um, I just want to tell you, man, thank you for taking the time to be part of this podcast. And I just want to tell you, man, uh, it's, it's a blessing to have you on the platform, man. So uh, no further to do, man. Let's get right into it. So what inspired you to do music, man. Um, okay. Uh, I was about five when I'd um, play like Lego rock band and stuff on the Xbox with like, my dad and my sister. And then there was just one day where I was like, this is really cool. I want to do this when I'm older. And then I was, when I was nine, I went off to middle school and then started playing drum, having drum lessons then. And then about two years later, I started uh, playing in bands and doing gigs and stuff. Okay, man. All right. So, um, how, how, um, what, 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 uh, did, did you get in, influenced by any other drummers besides, um, when doing music, man, basically? Yeah, um, I was growing, when I was, like, a lot younger, when I first started playing drums, I was heavily influenced by, uh, Lars Ulrich, which is the drummer from Metallica, that was, um, he was a big influence to me, and then as I've gotten older, I've got into... Uh, heavier music and drummers that are more technical, so like Jason Bold and uh, Ray Luzier from Korn, definitely a big uh, influences on me now as well, yeah. All right, man, so tell us about your studio. What were the criteria when setting up and how does this environment influence the creative process, man? Um... I mean, I'm not too sure to be honest. We just, I just go in and see what the riffs and what the guitar riffs and the lyrics that the everyone else in the band has, and then I try and play something that kind of like follows the guitars, if that makes any sense. All right. Okay. Um, what what are currently some of the most important tools and instruments you're using? That again, sorry. What are currently some of the most important tools and instruments you're using? Um, uh, definitely double bass pedals and uh, like toms, bass drums, uh, cymbals, or like pretty much everything. Pretty much everything you can probably imagine. <laughs> Okay, big dog. All right, man. So uh, could you describe your creative process to the basis of a piece or an album that's particularly clear to you? Um, funny story. In the bands that I've been in, we've not actually had a bass player. It's been the normal setup that I've, the setup that I've always been in has been a singer that plays rhythm guitar, a rhythm guitarist, and a solo guitarist, and then me as well. All right, okay. So, uh, describe your creative process on the basis. Oh wait, <laughs> my bad, man. That's 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 oh, man. Okay, all right, man. So, with more and more musicians creating than ever, and more and more of these creations being released, what does this mean to you as an artist in terms of originality? Um, well, I mean, it makes me excited because every single time a a new like single or a new album is released. It's always different from the last album or all the other albums. It's always different, and that always excites me. Definitely, because they'll put they might put like a new uh, drum beat or a new drum fill in there or something like that. It always excites me. That does. All right, man. All right. So, where do ideas come from? What do you start with, and how do you go about shaping these ideas? Um. I mean, I usually start with listening to the guitar riff a few times, 
and then I'll make I'll usually go to the basic uh the basic like the classic rock beat that is played in uh Black in Black by A C D C. I'll go and see if that fits and then from that I'll expand to seeing if I can play something on the cymbals or putting in like a different fill or something like that. But it also depends on uh what part of the song it's at, so like or if it's like if the band want it to be a bit heavier, like more of an intro sort of thing, if that makes any sense. All right, man. So let me ask you this, man. Um, so are you just like a solo drummer that just covers, or what is your vision on what you're doing and where you're trying to get, man? Um, currently, so I've been playing in bands for about five years now. I've got my own YouTube channel, which I've had for about, I'm going to say about a year and a half, um, where I post like drum covers, unboxing videos, uh, reaction videos, and like videos of when I'm do- in a band and we do like a live gig or something. So I'll post things like that. Um, I'm currently also looking at getting more uh, equipment to be able to do uh, recording and mixing for like my own bands and uh, for possibly other people as well, which I'm really excited to, to do. Yeah. All right, man. All right. Okay. So, um, how strictly do you separate separate improvising and composing? Please can you say that again. How strictly do you separate improvising and composing? Um, I don't tend to improvise uh, much. I tend to just try and stick to what the original beat is, if that makes sense. I don't want to play something that's completely random that no one is going to recognize. I want it to be very like noticeable and everything like that and straightforward. All right, man. So um so let me ask you this. Have you ever uh have you ever done any live performances it before? Yeah. I've been doing live performances about for about for about five years yeah um i've had about because of coronavirus and stuff i've had about i'm gonna say like maybe four gigs cancelled uh which is a bit of a shame but my last one was actually in january this year which was um at a place in bromsgrove called the artrix which is like a theater and stuff which is pretty cool and uh, there's like 300 seats there. That's pretty awesome. All right, man. So, um, what was it like performing for the first time in front of a live audience, man? Honestly, it was terrifying <laughs> because before then, I like back then, I had the only time I'd been playing drums in front of like people had been on uh, like the people in my family or if like my mate has come around and I learned something new I'd want to show them like this new thing that I've learned but other than that I hadn't like played in front of anyone so it was it was very different for me and it was it was quite um quite nerve-wracking and it was still like that for a few for about four gigs and then after that one I started to get a bit more comfortable with playing in front of people and I now make sure that I stay comfortable with performing in front of people by doing Twitch streams about like five streams a week for an hour and those things like that. All right, man. So, um, so, um, tell us a little bit about what you're set up with, man. The, the, um, all the, uh, drums and snares and your whole setup, man. Just, 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 Tell us a little backstory, man. All right, so my kit has currently got eight, dr- no, 11 drums, sorry, seven cymbals. On the left, I've got, on what the, from going from like left to right, I've got a side snare, uh, two hi hats, uh, a crash, then I've got uh, a bass drum, snare. I've got like five Rakton's, which is kind of strange. I've got two bass drums, 
and then I've got three across that and then two in the middle that are similar above that and then on the and then just to the right of the sec on the base of the base room on the right of guard then at the crash two floor tiles a rider and a china all right man so um have you ever done any like live performances like on instagram live youtube live facebook live um i've done live streams on instagram about probably like three years ago now was when i was doing them and then i started to get us I, I was then wanting to get uh different types of viewers so that's why i started twitch which i started I would say about four or five months ago now. Oh yeah, bro. Okay. So let me ask you this, man. Have you ever thought about playing for any more any other band in like maybe in your local area? Say that again, sorry. Have you ever thought about performing or playing drums for any other band in your local area? Uh I would love to play in as many bands as I could, if I'm honest, because I just want, I'm just hungry to play with other musicians and do as many performances as I can. But unfortunately, there's not too many, uh, too many like local bands to me. Because I mean, with the band that I'm like currently kind of in, um, that one of them lives, we live in like Redditch and Worcester and stuff like that. So it's a bit difficult for us to arrange practices, but we somehow uh, are able to do that. If you could collaborate with any band, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Um, definitely uh, Metallica, Slipknot, Ocean and White, um, and then a few like new upcoming bands like Two Year Break, Jinani, Devil Fire. Uh, I think there is someone else. Uh, yeah, I can't remember at the moment, but yeah, I'm fairly sure there's someone else. All right, man. Um, oh. um, have you ever played any covers on any of the band songs, bro? Say that again, sorry. Have you ever played any covers of any of the band songs at all? Uh, yeah, I've played a f only like a couple of Slipknot covers. I've uh, done a few Devil Fire, Jinani, uh, Two Year Break covers as well, and uh, I'm currently learning a cover for a band called The Curse Within, which they've got some great stuff out as well. All right, man. So what makes you different from other drummers, man? Um, I've always had. Like, I've always been like loved music from a very young age. Like I started listening to, I'm gonna say I think my dad introduced me to like uh, Metallica when I was about five years old. Um, I've always had really supportive parents as well. Like my mum and my sister and my nan, they all like uh, sort of music like poppy sort of stuff. So like my mum, she like she likes a lot of like Katy Perry and Sam Smith and Ed Sheeran and all that. And then like bands like um oh what are they called? <laughs> um I can't remember what they're called now. Like I think it's like the Who or something like that. And then my sister's beat is quite into things similar to those as well. But I've always been uh, quite close with my dad on the musical on the on the music side because both like the heavier sort of music as well. Which uh which works out both because when one of like a band posts something about saying like a new album that's coming out, me or my dad would just go to each other and say, "Oh, have you seen this is coming out?" But yeah, they're all really supportive, and they even though we're not always interested in the same stuff and the stuff that I play uh, with the bands that I'm in, they every, they've all been to every single uh, gig that I've played at, like from gigs where I'm playing. 50 people in pubs or uh like 10 people in minus two degrees outside on a trailer or in front of like 300 400 people yeah 
All right, man. So we got some questions from our audience, man. And one person asked, should I polish my symbol? Uh, I'd say... I would say, personally, I don't. It doesn't... To me, it doesn't really matter too much. But if it's, like, a brand new symbol, I would say, yeah, go for it. Because I know I've got some minor dark classic custom symbols, and I know that when I got those, I wanted to keep them nice and clean. So I would clean them like like every week or something like that. Yeah, I still clean them now, rarely, but roughly around like just before every gig I play, I clean them. All right. So the next question is, um, how do I stop my bass drum and hi hat pedals creeping? Um, the way that I found is just to get weights and put those in front of the foot, in front of the legs. That's honestly really helps me. That has. <laughs> All right, man. All right. So next one we got. Um, why should I put a hole in my bass drum head? Um, personally, with one of my old bass drum heads, I don't. Uh, with the with the one with the band's logo on it, I don't have a hole in that. But um, holes are. Usually there for putting uh, bass drum mics there, so that they are easily they're able to pick up the sound easier. Oh, okay, all right, man. That's dope, man. So, um, do you have a message to the youth? Um, I'd say that it's always a lot of effort, and it's a lot of hard work, and it takes a lot of time before you get good at something specific, like whether that's like a drum fill or a drum beat or anything like that. Like there was a drum beat that um, I was basically playing like four different things, but like one thing at a time. So like there was never two things at the same time. And I think that took me about six weeks to learn how to do that. But I've got it now and I can comfortably, comfortably play it with either my, just my right hand and my feet or just my left hand and my feet. But yes. All right, man. So I know you're not a songwriter. My next question is favorite quote. Favorite quote. Um, to be fair, I there is quite a lot that I like. But I think I've got to say one of my. I don't really. The one that I'd say is probably my favorite is probably the chorus from uh, a song called "Do You Want to Find Love" by Two Year Break. I think it's really catchy and it's really awesome. All right, man. All right. So how old were you when you decided you wanted to be a drummer? I was about five. Yeah, I was about five and never properly started playing for like another four years after that. And I'm currently 15 now. So it's been something that I've wanted to do for about 10 years. And it's been just as much fun as I thought it would be. Yeah, it's absolutely awesome. All right, man. So, do you have any music guilty pleasures, man? Um, not really, to be honest, because I met Jason Bold from Bullet for My Valentine in uh, October last year, and um, I asked him the same question of like how to how uh, well about how to get better, and he said to just listen to loads of different types of music. So whether that's Metal, classic rock, pop rock, uh, pop rock, uh, or even like rap and stuff. So I tend to listen and things like jazz as well. Um, yeah, so I listen to a lot of stuff like that. But I find it quite funny when I've got a mate that will play a song that they wouldn't expect me to know or like. And then I'll be like, oh, that's a great song. I really like that. And they'll be a bit sharks and stuff like that. So that's always been a lot of fun. What do you do outside of music? Uh, nothing much. Just a bit of like homework and stuff from school because I've got my GCSEs coming up soon. Uh, I've got. I then also play like computer games like on my own or with my mates, and um, I'll meet up with friends and I'll spend time with my family. All 
All right, man. So, um, the next uh audience that asked the question asked if he could fix my broken symbol. That again, sorry. Can I fix my broken symbols? Is what he asked. Uh, yes, you can, but it does change the sound. So you can do this thing where you uh, cut out a bit of the symbol, like the cracks part of the symbol, uh, to save it. But you don't want you want to do it as like a very slight curve instead of a um, bit of like a rectangle, if that makes any sense. Otherwise, that will just break easier. But I've always found the best way is to just deal with it and like. Just keep using the broken symbol until I can afford a replacement. But I've I did have uh, two broken symbols actually not long ago, and then I won a competition and I got a minor Byzance uh, fuel crash ride. So I've replaced one of them with that. Then the other one I'm just saving to then end up buying a replacement minor symbol for it. All right, man. So, um, we have another question. One more question, and he wants to know what's the best way to change snare buzz. To change the snare buzz. Yeah, the best way to tame it. Um, for me, I can't remember what I did. I on my snares, I've got the uh, the snare heads, the like the heads with the snares on. I've got those quite tight, and then I've got um, like the batter heads fairly like loose, not like really loose, so that they're dead, but like so you can press down and feel it a bit. I like, feel it like a bit of movement. I've also found that a great way, especially with my main snare, um, I put a one kilogram weight on there, which is which has definitely changed the sound a lot, and. Uh, if you want more of a buzz, I'd say have the drum tuned higher. But if you want less of a buzz, then I'd use a six and a half uh, by fourteen snare. That's what I currently use. Uh, I, and I've got my main as a uh, as a steel one as well. So that's uh, yeah, that's what I've done. All right, man. All right. Thank you for the advice. All right, man. So more into you, man. What was it like growing up, and what is the history of where you're from? Uh, all right. So growing up, I lived in a uh, semi-detached house. It was relatively small, and like that's where I grew up. Like I went through like like preschool and first school, and then spent a year of middle school in there. So I spent like year five in there and then um then year six i then moved house to this one that i'm currently in which is a lot bigger and we've now got a garage and i'm able to put my drums in there as well but yeah it's it's been uh been quite comfortable there's been obviously uh when i, when I came out saying that i like metal and all this other weird stuff that people are doing People have been like, that's a bit strange, and they've had a bit of a laugh about it, but it does uh, stop. Yeah, it's been it's been a fun journey. All right, man. So, um, man, what are your favorite venues venues to perform at? Definitely theaters. I've I've done. Uh, I've done, um, I've played at, actually, to be fair, I've, Theatres and Fates have been pro are probably my two favourite ones. Because um, with the theatre ones, you've got uh, someone doing like loads of sound and lighting and stuff, which looks really cool. Um, then when I've played at Fates, it's been like in the summer and stuff, and there's been people that are there to uh, see like other people. So I've played at... Um, like a Primo Sospice Fate, which is basically like raising awareness for people with cancer, I think it is. I don't really remember. But I've played um, the, the fight there where I've had people watching and it's been like sunny and it's pretty fun. And it's like nice warm weather because in England we don't normally have that. 
it's usually quite cold, quite rainy, but in the summer it's quite nice to be playing outside. All right, man. All right. So, do you have any goals in 2021? 2021. Um, definitely getting to jazz music. Uh, yeah, maybe I want to get more subscribers on my YouTube channel, more views. Um, I want to pass uh, my GCSE so I can go to uh, a college called BIM, which is in Birmingham, which is a uh, college solely focused on music. So that's like music production and like. It, the, and like all the instruments and stuff like that um yeah and get some like better gear and maybe some more drum mics things like that and hopefully do some gigs again what is the best advice you've been given um always no, like always go into a pra- into like a band practice um having an open mind going it doesn't matter because i'm i'm only 15 at the moment so the likelihood of the band i'm currently in to be really successful i have no idea especially since we've all got to go through having gcses between that between like now and then so yeah so always go through that so it doesn't really matter if we practice for the whole two hours that we meet up or whether we just talk for an hour or whatever because i used to be like we have this time to practice and we're paying for it and all that sort of stuff and the guitarist would talk and have a bit of a chat every now and again which that's that is fine but it used to wind me up because we could do that other times but then you need to be able to come up with new material but i didn't realize at the time but for you to be able to come up with new stuff, you need to talk to each other and see what's going on with each other. Which uh, my dad's definite, which is what my dad told me about. Because if we don't talk and we just play, then I'm I'm not going to know how everyone else in the band have been doing over the last week or so, and they're not going to know how I've been doing. And it's just like, a great way to connect. All right, man. So you got any advice for any upcoming uh, drummer, maybe in your local area? Um, uh, yeah. Uh, I was going to say something, I can't remember what it was. But yeah, practice, practice as much as you can, whether you're just sat there for an hour or so practicing like paradiddles or other rudiments like that. Or whether you're working on um, like different like different techniques, or whether you're actually playing and just like trying to learn a new song, or like I'd always say try and learn something new every week, or at least at least one thing every month. I would say definitely. All right, man. So um, so let me ask you this, man. How is your music going to evolve from here? What can we expect from you, man? Um, I'd say one of the main reasons, the main causes for it to evolve is definitely on the new piece of gear I've got. Because if I've got a new symbol, then I'm going to be using that, wanting to be using that, like loads. And same if it's like a new drum. But um, it also depends on the sort of music I'm cur- I'm into at that time. So. Currently, uh, over the last few days, I've really gotten into rap music. So I might play something that's a bit more technical and then or a bit more basic. But then if I was like really into metal at the time, then I might play stuff with loads of double bass and like, like stuff like on breakdowns and things like that. But it also depends on uh, all the stuff that's happened in my life, whether I've just like say someone has died, uh, that definitely that's happened which has affected me whether i've uh i was in a relationship just got into a relationship or just got out of one um but yeah so loads of like depends on what has affected me to feel a certain way but yeah okay man um 
What does drumming mean to you? To me, it means it means everything. Like I practice for at least five hours a week. Uh, when I practice, so like with, with before Corona, I was playing drums about I think it's like eleven hours a week. I'd play like five hours during the school day, through the school week. Then I play f- an extra like four hours on a weekend and stuff like that as well. So I'd be playing maybe like nine hours a week. And I will do whatever it takes, whether I will do whatever it takes for me to be able to uh, be able to get somewhere new to like get more viewers on YouTube or get more followers on Instagram or subscribers on uh, YouTube or Twitch or anything like that just to get my name out there. All right, man, you got any special shout outs you want to give? Sorry, say that again. Any special shout outs you want to give? Okay. Thank you. Hey, no, I asked you, uh, my bad. I asked you if you want to give any special shout outs to your supporters or anyone that you want to thank, bro. Oh, uh, definitely want to say a big thank you to my, to my family. That would, that definitely would, uh, that definitely would help. Because they've always, they've been the most supportive people um, that have ever been around for me. Because I've had friends that have, all my friends are, uh, none of them are really interested in music. But my family are quite, uh, interested and they will support me with that and it's just really nice knowing that i've got them in my side by my side and stuff like that yeah all right man so um go ahead and plug in all your social media outlets and let everyone know where they can find your um youtube channel how they can look you up right all right uh my instagram is Samuel L. Jackson, uh, 555. That should have like a picture of a drum kit or something like that. My YouTube channel is SLJ Drums. That should have a picture of me like playing live. My Twitch channel is the same as SLJ Drums. Uh, I can't remember what my Facebook is, if I'm honest. <laughs> but yeah, I've only, I've only really got those. I don't have like Twitter or... Uh, anything like that all right man um do you want to say your final words to the audience do you have anything you want to plug besides your uh social media outlets man uh sure definitely i would say definitely check out some there's some great uh upcoming bands it's and they've all and some of them have got some new stuff coming up very soon so definitely go and check out a band called blitz um, Devil Fire, Inani, The Curse Within, Be It Break. Um, I think there is something else, another band. Uh, yeah, so check out all of those. And then also check out uh, the stuff that a guy called Jay Shredder is doing. He's a, uh, he's a music producer. He's the uh, guy that's produced like the Jinani album. Which that's absolutely awesome. Also, uh, Mar- Marissa and the Moths, they're great as well. But yeah, they're all they're all great. Go and check them all out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. Samuel L. Jackson, an upcoming drummer from England. You already know this is strictly for the music podcast. 